bags. Hey gang, we are at a great point in terms of the counting cycle, meaning a bunch of systematic steps that we perform every single period. So let's dive deep into this closing process so that we can finally complete the accounting cycle. But first, okay, so far we understand that accounting is a process that's broken down into two parts, recorded and reported. And throughout a particular period, we have a series of activities that take place in a sequential order. Each day transactions are affecting a business. And as those transactions affect the business, we record it into our journal and then we post it into our ledger. This is considered the recording phase. We continue to do that throughout the particular period. And as we get to the end of the period, we shift from the recording phase to the reporting phase, meaning that all of the information we've recorded within that particular ledger now gets transferred into four financial statements, which we deliver to the public. And so we systematically complete these steps every single period, thus considering this particular steps to be called the accounting cycle. After we deliver those financial statements and make them available to the public, we are now in the last part of the accounting cycle, which means that we need to refresh certain accounts so that they can begin the new period with a zero balance. This process is called the closing process. And so basically what it means is that we close out particular accounts, temporary accounts, so that they can have a zero balance to start off fresh for the next particular period. So what are temporary accounts? Temporary accounts are accounts that will temporarily have a particular balance that must be closed at the end of the period. Who are temporary accounts? Temporary accounts consist of revenues, expenses, and dividends. These particular temporary accounts must begin the next period with a zero balance because we have to account properly. Think about it, gang. If we didn't reset our revenue balances or our expense balances, that means we will be transferring income from one period and reporting it to the next. And that's not correct. Absolute <laughs> categorical never. For example, let's suppose that this period we had an income statement that provided us with income of $4 million. If we don't close out the revenues and expenses that gave us that $4 million income to have a zero balance for the next period, when we report the income statement for the following period, it's going to be overstated with income by $4 million. Therefore, revenues, expenses, and dividends must always have a zero balance at the beginning of the period. So without any further ado, let's get through these steps. Okay, game. what we have here is an example of a partial ledger, which consists of only the accounts that we need to make the proper closing entries. And so our very first step is to close out service revenue to income summary. So as we can see on the ledger, we have an ending balance in our service revenue account for $150,000. And so we see it's on the credit side. And so to make that first entry, we're gonna close this out so this balance could be zero. We're starting off fresh, we're resetting the service revenue account for the next period. So we're gonna debit service revenue for the $150,000. And what are we gonna credit? Income summary for the same amount. Pretty simple game. Let's move on. Okay, gang, so in this second step, we are instructed to close out each one of those expense accounts individually to income summary so that all those expense accounts will have a zero balance at the beginning of the following period. And so we know that our expenses sit on the books on the debit because that's the side in which it grows. And so we're going to credit each one of these expenses in debit income summary. So what I like to do is get a head start in debit income summary first. And we're gonna credit each one of these expenses, gang. 
So we have salaries expense. We have supplies expense. We have rent expense. And we have depreciation expense for building. So our salaries expense will be credited for $40,000. Our supplies expense will be credited for $1,000. Our uh, rent expense will be credited for $3,000, as well as our depreciation expense for the building for $3,000. So gang, if we add up all of these expenses, our total should be the amount that we're gonna debit into our income summary account. And so that seems to be 47,000. Let's move on to the next one. Step number three, transfer net income or net loss for the period into retained earnings. Okay, gang, so we know at the end of the period when it's reporting time, our very first financial statement is always the income statement. We know that the income statement reports our revenues and expenses for the period, and it helps us measure income. Income is measured if our revenues are higher than our expenses. Losses are measured if our expenses are higher than our revenues. Either way, both net income or net loss will affect our retained earnings account. And so what we do after we calculate that net income or net loss on the financial statement, we transfer that balance into our statement for retained earnings, the second financial statement to be produced. However, on the ledger, none of this information is of being affected, which means we have to manually record or manually adjust our retained earnings account. And so we do it within step three of the closing process. And so what's that journalization? If we have a net income that's gonna increase our retained earnings, which means that our retained earnings account must be credited. So we have to credit our retained earnings account. So what are we gonna debit? Income summary. Vice versa, if we have a loss, we have to decrease our retained earnings account, which means our retained earnings account must be debited. Once we debit retained earnings, we then have to credit income summary to fulfill the transaction. So remember what I told you, gang, income summary appears and disappears the minute we finish this process. Let's take a visual look at an example. Okay, gang, and so in step three, we're gonna transfer the income or loss for the period into our retained earnings account. And so we know how to calculate whether or not we have an income or a loss. We simply take our revenues and subtract our expenses. If our revenues are higher than our expenses, we have an income. If our expenses are higher than our revenues, we have a loss. And we can clearly see that our total revenues equal 150,000. And if we were to add up all of our expenses, which we done in step two, we realized that our total expenses were 47,000. So clearly if we subtract the 47,000 from 50,000, that's gonna give us a net income of $103,000. And so we know that net income affects retained earnings positively. So basically, gain we have to increase retained earnings by $103,000. How will we increase retained earnings? Well, retained earnings is a part of stockholders equity, which is the clear gain, which means we have to credit it. So let's make that journal entry. We're gonna credit retained earnings, and I'm kind of working backwards, gang. We'll just follow the madness. We're gonna credit retained earnings for the income calculated of 103,000. And what are we gonna debit? You got it, gang. Income summary. Now, while we're talking about income summary, I want you to physically see how it appears and disappears only because of this particular closing process. So let's post income summary. We saw in step one, we had to close out our revenues. So we debited revenues and credited income summary for 150,000. Then we saw in step two, we had to credit all of those expenses and debit income summary for the total of 47,000. 
And now we see here, we had just for step three, debited income summary for 103,000. So just as quick as it appeared, it now disappears, gang. Why? Because both sides cancel out. Let's move on. Okay, gang, and last but not least, we need to close out our dividends to retain earnings. Why? Because we know dividends is a distribution of income and retain earnings happens to be income. So we have to decrease our retain earnings based on the amount of dividends we've given. So in this ledger, it shows that our dividends were $10,000 on the debit side. And so in order to close this out, we're going to debit retained earnings in order to make it go down for the 10,000. And we're gonna credit dividends for 10,000 as well. And so as you see, when we make the proper posts into the ledger, all of the accounts have been successfully closed out. Our service revenue now has a zero balance, salaries expense, all the expenses actually gain. Our retained earnings now has its new adjusted balance, which I'll calculate shortly, and our dividends account is actually closed out as well. So in terms of this retained earnings, it increased by 103 to a total of 133, and then it decreased by 10, so that gives us 123, $123,000. And gain, we have already done this on the reporting part because we transfer our income from the income statement into the statement of retained earnings. This process here effectively allows us to adjust the books, the ledger particularly. And with that being said, that wraps up the closing process. Very short and sweet, but extremely important for the accounting. So again, I already know those wheels are turning, so won't you do me a favor, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and show your friends this beautiful lecture so they can also chase the bags as well. As always, gang, it's been my pleasure, and I will see you soon. Bags!